screen. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. I'm going to have to open a whole new Google Hangouts. Hold on. Let me call back. Hold on. You got the notification? Hmm? All right. Two minutes of cosmic peace. In war times, this is um, a follow-up to uh, the video that I did, did Dr. York teach Nut was a physical person. And that was just something done as a, a little prelude to um, what we're going to be talking about tonight, which is this show is titled The Scientific Identity of an Ancient and uh, Modern Times. And... Uh, the Ken Anu Bunu, the Bone Marrow Nupu will be speaking uh, for the majority of the uh, the session, and uh, you know I'm just gonna co-host if I need to throw something in that I will. Um, we want to um, dedicate this show to a Ken that had passed uh, over the weekend. We just found out. Um, today that uh, we lost the Ken. So I wanted to uh, send a, a true mental piece to uh, the elder Ray Noon Ray Nupu, also known as uh, Ripu Bilu Noon Nupu. And uh, I knew anything you want to say on that before we get get moving um true peace to the audience out there it's a, i'm hearing a little echo from. yeah hold on try it now yeah true peace to the uh audience out there to all the kins and the friends of the african race um definitely want to send uh um, my condolences to the family of Ripu Bilu uh, Nupu passed away this weekend. Um, this is very sad news because I know that uh, this Ken in particular was working on his health and things like that. I don't really know the nature of um, him passing away, so I can't pass, you know, I, I can't just guess or make an assumption of what has happened. But I know that a lot of um, the, 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 African people in our race as of lately has been passing away from these um heart failures, you know, all these uh circulatory issues. And myself in particular, it's um it's hitting me um a lot because right now I'm working on some things to really get um get our health in order. And you know, hopefully it can um come faster than um than normal uh, their normal speed and you know get to our kids and our race so that we can um start to do the right thing and really enhance the uh the brain new gods which are you know which reside in us already and also they reside outside of us as well and if we get our health together we'll be able to connect a little better with the cosmos and things of that nature but um my deepest condolences to uh, Ray Noon Ray, also known as uh, Ripu Belu Nupu. And um, I hope that his family and um, they can find some, uh, you know, some some kind of comfort in knowing that, um, you know, he left a legacy of health. And, you know, that was one of his main things was to really get the, the health thing popping. So, you know, um, 
we're gonna we're definitely going to you know continue that particular legacy of um of health whether it be mental health or whether it be physical health or spiritual health so i hope that we can move forward and you know heal our race mentally spiritually and physically and that's just basically what i'm going to say about that um particular situation All right, Ken. So, uh, if you're ready to start your presentation, then it's, you know you can go ahead and do your thing. Give me, give me one second. You got it on YouTube right now? Mm -hmm. It's already up. I'm sending the link. Huh? Yeah, it's already out. It's live. All right, give me one second. I'm gonna open up my um my YouTube as well. All right. So let's see how many people are watching. Yeah, that's what I wanted to get to. Um, hold on. All right, so I don't necessarily need to check that out. All right, cool. So let's get straight to business. I'm going to screen share the first screen. And the first order of business is, let me know if you see that screen, Ken. All right, give me a second. Okay, you got the um uh nut off of Wikipedia. Correct. Now this has been um the topic of discussion, you know, as of lately between uh Nooney Boos and the Wapians, um, especially in uh the Nawapian um books. oh you can you pull that up real quick, Ken? I know I know I know you um trying to get to step off to the side but you know just just to um show them in the plagiarized book where they're showing that um brain newts um uh is in reference to this particular um goddess in ancient egypt and we're gonna um prove this to be false all right, give me all right. so but well, i'm gonna talk while you get that picture um ready so this uh particular goddess um uh, in ancient times, the Nawapians tried to say is um, brain newts. And I'm going to show beyond a shadow of a doubt that the nut or newt in ancient Egypt is not brain newts without a shadow of a doubt. With So after this video, they should stop calling nut the ancient Egyptian goddess brain newts after, okay. after that it is going the, the conversation is going to be over after tonight you ready to, sh to share yours mm -hmm. all right so let me end my screen sharing all right now you pull yours up there it is all right so they're saying that nut uh is newts all right um also i think york in his uh in his book the uh what's that book called the holy tablets he had um nut nut up there um the goddess nut as well so um but he didn't refer to her as brain newts because they didn't get to those nature books yet the nature books were fairly new at that point in time and i don't think york had got to the um to the nature books at that particular time but let's let's dive into who nut is or the goddess nut all right so i'm gonna screen share real quick right. it's gonna get intense in here kins i'm telling y'all without a shadow of a doubt it's gonna get real intense in here let me know if you see my sc sc uh, screen, Ken. 
All right. Keep your WhatsApp by you. That way I ain't got to keep talking. I'll just be like, yes or no. All right. Yeah. My WhatsApp is right here by me. You ready? All right. So let me know if you um you see my screen, Ken. You see my screen with uh with the Wikipedia up there? All right, let me try to screen share it again then. Hold on, give me a second, folks. I'll try to screen share this real quick. All right, and screen share, open up, screen share, start screen share. Is it up there now? Uh, what's going on? All right. It's showing up on my end. I don't know why. And it's saying I'm screen sharing. Did you end your last screen share? Maybe maybe you have to end your last screen share. Yeah, I did. I, it was something white, but I couldn't see it. You, right. hit, do you see the, where it say present to everyone? Click that. If that's... Cause I can see it in the, I can see it in your icon, but it's not showing on the screen. Is it showing now? Come on, it's just ridiculous. It was just showing too, right? Yeah, in the corner, but it's not showing on the screen. That's crazy. Let me see. If you need to email me something, and I do it from that. You know, we gotta we gotta get this right because. This don't make no sense. So I'm, I'm going to hang up and I'm going to call right back. All right, so while we waiting for a newt to get that together, let me just do a, a follow up. On what we're dealing with. If those who seen my, uh, my last video is nut did Dr. York teach nut? All right. um, yeah, I would just let this doing a little something real quick. So I, again, when you when you do a, a basic re, uh, research on nut or knew it, the, the basic things that come up, the different spellings, um, talk about the goddess of the sky is shown as a woman or a cow with black or midnight blue skin, etc. This is just the basic information that even those who translate it the information what they do get is what you will see here some of it is it's different from different things not uh nocturnal night equinox what do you all of these different little things but if you read and when you do your research none of this has nothing to do with the brain or brain news as the wapians are now trying to jump on the train while it's trying to basically jump on the train hijack the train and steer it a whole nother way repaint it and put york name all on it so this whole thing is again it's not just aimed toward them it's actually the correct a lot of the misinformation that's put out there and is and is and the reason why it's misinformation because a lot of it again it's it's just like 
how we talk right now amongst each other and then hundreds and hundreds of years later they come upon you know english or whatnot and they translate the basic english vernacular the way the english words are pronounced and certain way we talk to each other they just not going to understand all of the basic stuff that come with that because then you got what's called slang and people got their own talks within their own groups and stuff like that so the the foundation of what they're saying about all of the egyptian um stories just for the lack of a better term are actually founded it can be explained in modern day terms and i just wanted to say for the record that we do not agree with um brother jabari that most of the stories of ancient egypt and abroad are mythological that's totally uh not true and i hope whoever taught him that definitely need to change the direction of where they're teaching because they, those stories are not mythological and they're not um some of them again like again you get into anthropo anthropomorphic when they start personifying these particular uh forces and and universal uh functions into persons and animals and stuff like that but um a new to be ready i'm gonna just get on out of the way yeah let me just end your screen share and gotcha. let me try to do mines now all right does the whole thing pop up now i i can see it that you it's ready to show okay there you go all right so the whole thing came up all right cool let's get the let's get the ball rolling all right so we see now that nut uh like tanu was just uh explaining to you guys is the uh sky goddess but we're gonna read from wikipedia what nut is nut ancient egyptian nut also known by various other transcriptions is the goddess of the sky in the ennead of ancient egypt religion she was seen as a star covered nude woman arching over the earth as a cow i need you guys to keep in mind everything that you're seeing and how she's personified remember she's personified as a cow i think one of her other names was hathor as well so just keep that in mind all right pronunciations of ancient egyptian is uncertain because of the vowels were long omitted from this from its writing although her name often includes the unpronounced determinative hieroglyph for the sky her name nut or itself also meaning sky is usually transcribed as nut but also sometimes appears in older sources as nunet nunet nonet and nut all right so i want you guys to just keep in mind right here who nut is okay so we're gonna move on now to some images of nut i'm gonna move on to another image let me know if you guys see it so i you see that image with her arching with the stars in her it's a whole different uh it's a whole different screen now do you see that screen all right great so this is this is from um ancient egypt each ancient egypt online dot co dot uk all right and we see nut being arched over these particular gods with her, her two arms facing forward and her two legs in the back and she has stars within her body and at the bottom of this it says she was a cow goddess who adopted some of the attributes of hathor when ra became tired of ruling she up into the heavens on her back in the form of a cow however she generally takes the form of a naked woman covered with stars holding her body up in arch facing downwards 
Her arms and legs are the pillars of the sky and hands and feet were thought to touch the ground at the four cardinal points on the horizon. Geb is often depicted beneath her sometimes, I don't even know that word, if phil, phil, philic, uh, I don't, I'm not even going to pronounce it, you guys see it. She was just portrayed as a woman wearing one of the hieroglyphs that made up her name around Egyptian pot. All right. Let's go down a little further. Because of her role in the rebirth of sun, of the sun, she became a mother-like protector of the dead who was often painted on the inside lid of the sarcophagus protecting the mummy. Her symbols, a wooden maquette, which is a ladder charm, was placed inside the tomb to help the deceased climb to the heavens. There were many festivals to Nut through the year, including the festival of Nut and Ra and the Feast of Nut, and she appears in numerous depictions, yet no temples or specific cult centers are li linked to her. All right. So I want you guys to keep this particular image in mind. Now I'm going to show you guys who Nut is supposed to be and why they call her the cow goddess. And why we see the four limbs being outstretched over these particular gods and giving birth to these particular sons and um and gods here we go we bought the first first spell we bought the break you got you see that tarnu that article milky way galaxy has four spiral arms new study confirms all right Nut is supposed to be our universal nebula. Now, we're going to get to what a nebula is in a minute. And we're going to go back to what Nut is. Nut is, is I'm going to tell you the answer. Nut is the nebula. And I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to play a YouTube channel which is going to explain to you guys what the nebula is. But I want you guys to keep in mind the four spiral arms. All right. So this is a 12 year study that was published by uh, these particular scientists. Monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society has confirmed that our Milky Way galaxy has four spiral arms following years of debate that it only had only has two. All right. So. Nut is what? The cow goddess. What do we know cows to produce? Milk. This is where our galaxy gets its name from. It comes from Nut because Nut is the cow goddess. She represents the nebula that helped to form our galaxy. So our ancient ancestors understood cosmology way before what we're studying today because as you can see only in 2013 they were having this debate about if it had four arms or not our ancient ancestors thousands of years ago already knew that nut had four limbs they call it four spiral arms but these arms we know are limbs of the particular galaxy but we know that nebulas help to form galaxies because nebulas and galaxies are, are are different from each other. A nebula is basically a cloud of gas before suns are formed. So there's no light necessarily in a nebula. And we could we can actually go back now, hold on, to what a nebula is. But we can before we get to that, I want to get through this article. The Milky Way in is our galactic hope the galactic home and studying the structure gives us a, a unique opportunity to understand how a very typical spiral galaxy works in terms of where stars are born and why said co-author professor melvin Hoare from the university of leeds all right so these i mean you guys could go read this for yourself and you can see that they just figured out that our galaxy 
had four spiral arms. So she is the representation of our Milky Way galaxy. That's why she's known as the cow goddess because she is our Milky Way galaxy and she's hovering over us. She's protecting the the uh the, the, the her um her creations. If you see if you look at the image again, she's protecting her creations on the inside the same way these arms are protecting the inside of the creations you understand what i'm saying so it's very important to see that these this this particular galaxy and nut are the same exact thing now i'm going to play a video real quick so you guys can understand what a nebula is do you see that, Ken, the um, YouTube video that I pulled up? Do you see the YouTube video? All right, hold on. I'm going to screen share the YouTube video real quick. Give me one second, folks. And Geb just represents basically... Part of the matter, because part of the matter and part of the planets that are being created as a nebula creates suns, star, suns, planets, and satellites. Because Geb represents the Earth God, the Earth God. So because he represents the Earth God, he's the representation of planets throughout the um the Milky Way galaxy. So she is a representation of this milky way galaxy and we're going to show you guys in noon where she represents this particular uh nebula but let me screen share my uh the video to show you guys real quick one second Where's the let me close this down? Give me one second, folks. All right, YouTube. There we go. Oh, it's not popping up yet, but um, give me one second, folks. But I hope you guys see where I'm making the link that Nut is indeed a nebula. She's not, she's not the, you know, she's a, she's one of the creators of the Milky Way galaxy. Oh, here we go. Beautiful. Let me know if you see the, um, the YouTube screen, Ken. All right, great. Hold on. I'm going to play this real quick so you guys can see it. Somehow, somehow it's, it's trying to load up. Easy when we talk to the public. Right. I may be biased, but I think astronomy is the most beautiful of all sciences. Is it playing? Game? Sure, other fields of science have lots of eye candy, but all I have to do is pull out a shot of Saturn and I win because Saturn. It's all gorgeous. Planets, moons, stars, clusters. But of all of them, you just can't beat a nebula. Why? Because nebulae. <laughs> Nebula is Latin for cloud, and for once in astronomy, we have a name that actually describes the object accurately. Nebulae are clouds of gas and dust in space. I've already talked about them a bit. 
For example, stars form from nebulae. Our sun did about 4.6 billion years ago. When a medium-sized star dies, it blows off winds of gas, then lights them up as the white dwarf core of the star is revealed, creating a planetary nebula. Also, when a high-mass star explodes, it catastrophically vaporizes itself, becoming a violently expanding cloud of gas. Nebulae are literally part of the births, lives, and deaths of stars. So, besides being beautiful, they're also pretty versatile. There are a lot of ways of categorizing nebulae. One way is by how we see them. For example, if a cloud of gas is blasted by light from a nearby massive star, the gas in it becomes excited. The electrons in its atoms jump up to a higher energy level. When the electrons drop back down, they emit light. The gas glows, and we call this an emission nebula. The color of an emission nebula depends on the gas in it and how hot it is. Hydrogen, for example, glows most strongly in the red, and we see that color in most emission nebulae. Oxygen tends to glow green, but to a lesser extent, it gives off blue light too. Other elements span the spectrum in colors they give off, and these colors aren't limited to visible light. Hydrogen can emit infrared and even radio light, and if it's energized enough, it'll emit in the ultraviolet too. That's true for many elements. Although most emission nebulae look substantial, they're actually incredibly tenuous. A typical density in a gas nebula is only a few thousand atoms per cubic centimeter. Mind you, in the air you breathe, there are about 10 to the 19 atoms per cubic centimeter, a thousand trillion times denser than a typical nebula. Really, a nebula is barely more than a vacuum. The reason they look so cloudy is that they're big, really big really big. A decent sized nebula is several light years in diameter, and that's a lot of centimeters. That much gas adds up, and so some nebulae can be pretty bright. While emission nebulae glow due to their own light, reflection nebulae are bright because, can you guess? They reflect the light of nearby bright massive stars. In this case though, the nebula isn't made of gas, but is instead mostly dust. And I don't mean like the hair and skin flake dust bunnies you find under your couch either. When astronomers talk about dust, they mean tiny grains, a micron across. Just so you know, a human hair is 100 times wider than that. These tiny grains contain things like silicates, aluminum oxide, and calcium. And in many cases, this dust is laced with complex molecules called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. While I love that fancy name for them, you might know them better as soot. Yep, when you light a match, you're pretty much making some of the same stuff that lurks between the stars. Dust doesn't emit visible light, but it can affect the visible light from stars if they're inside the dust cloud or nearby. Turns out, dust is very good at scattering light. That means that when light hits it, the light gets sent off in some other direction. This scattering is highly wavelength dependent, so blue light is scattered very strongly, while red light can go right through. We saw this in the last episode. The dust surrounding the Pleiades star cluster is a reflection nebula. The light from the stars in the Pleiades is scattered by the nearby dust, and the blue light gets sent in every direction, including toward us. The red light doesn't scatter nearly as well, so we don't see it. It never gets sent toward us. Thick dust is also very good at absorbing visible light. If a star is embedded in enough dust, the light from it is dimmed considerably. If the cloud is dense enough or big enough, the dust can completely extinguish the light seen from a star. At the same time, if the dust is at the right density, the blue light from a star inside a dust cloud gets scattered while the red light can get through. This effect reddens starlight, and in some dust clouds, it provides a striking view. Stars outside the cloud look normal enough, but closer in they get redder and redder and then fade out entirely. The result is a fuzzy red-edged hole in space. Pretty cool. You can see that effect in Barnard 68, a small dust cloud, just half a light year in size. These are also sometimes called molecular clouds. They're cold enough that atoms can stick together to form molecules. Their cores can be hundreds of degrees below zero Celsius. Some dust clouds like this are relatively small, but others can get downright huge. We call these giant molecular clouds because why not? These can be incredibly massive with thousands or hundreds of thousands of times the mass of the sun and stretch for hundreds of light years. And that brings us to one of the most glorious objects in the sky, the Orion Nebula. This is an emission nebula located just below Orion's belt. It's actually a naked eye object visible in modestly dark skies. It looks like a star by eye, but even binoculars reveal it to be fuzzy, and through a telescope or with long exposure images, you get unmitigated majesty. The Orion Nebula is a star-forming factory. A bunch of stars have been born in it. Some of them are very massive and incredibly luminous. Keep in mind, folks, keep in mind. I just paused the video for a second. Look at that definition. The Orion Nebula is a star-forming 
factory. A bunch of stars have been born in it. Some of them are very massive and luminous. What is the def? Who is the definition? What's the definition of nut? Nut. She creates stars. She is where Ra is born again. So she is a nebula. You understand what I'm saying? We're gonna get to the fact that she's not brain newts itself, but. I want you guys to understand that our ancients knew who Nut was. Nut was the nebula. That she is the star forming factory. She is the producer of stars, which is the nebula. But let's continue the video. Entire nebula is lit by four stars located in its heart, collectively called the trapezium. These are four brutes, huge, brilliant stars that are each far more massive than the sun. Their light is so fierce, it illuminates the entire nebula, which is about 20 light years across. And here's a funny thing about Orion. What you're seeing is not just a gas cloud in space. It's actually just a bubble sitting on the edge of a much, much larger molecular cloud, hundreds of light years across. That cloud is cold and dark, and so we don't see it by eye. The trapezium stars formed inside that cloud, very near the edge. When they turned on, fusing hydrogen into helium, they started blasting out a mind-numbing amount of ultraviolet light, which began eating away at the gas and dust. Eventually, they blew a hole in the side of the cloud, like a weak spot in a bicycle tire blowing out. What we see as the magnificent Orion Nebula is just a dimple a cavity in the side of the cloud filled with gas heated to glowing by the stars. There are still stars forming there today, too. I mean, literally, right now. We can see it happening. In episode 9, I talked about the solar system and how it starts off as a flattened disk of gas and dust. When we look at the Orion Nebula with Hubble, we see those disks. They're called protoplanetary disks, and they're so dense that they absorb almost all the light from the stars forming inside them, so they're dark and we see them in silhouette against the brighter gas of the nebula. Unless you look in the infrared, that kind of light can pierce the dark disk. And when we use infrared telescopes, we can see the protostars forming in the centers of those disks. Take a good look. Those are baby stars, literally stars that are forming right this very minute. They're still hot due to their contraction, but in a few million years, they'll ignite fusion in their cores and become real stars. They'll blow away the remaining material around them, revealing themselves, and perhaps any planets orbiting them as well. In fact, once stars start forming inside a nebula, its days are numbered. The Eagle Nebula is another star factory, with active starbirth going on inside of it. Some of these are massive luminous stars and give off so much ultraviolet light, it erodes away at the surrounding nebula in a process called photoevaporation. However, dense knots of material forming new stars can resist that erosion better and protect the material behind them, in essence, shadowing it. This results in long fingers of material we see in silhouette against the hotter gas, like sandbars in a stream. Observing their infrared light, we can also see the stars embedded inside them. There are several of these giant towers in the Eagle Nebula, Hold on. three of which have been called the Pillars of... Hold on. I want you guys to see that, that particular... Stars embedded inside them. That particular definition. Observing the infrared light, we can see also see stars embedded inside, of, inside them. When we look at Nut hovering over Geb and the other gods, what do we see embedded inside of Nut? We see stars embedded inside of her. You see, our ancient ancestors knew of these things prior to what they're teaching today. They are now learning these things. But let's keep it moving. I just want you guys to be familiar with certain terms and words and things that they're using and not get confused. Our ancient ancestors knew exactly what the universe looked like, what the nebula looked like what it what you know what were they doing to form and how they were creating stars and things of that nature this is why they call nut the cow goddess they call it a cow goddess because we live in the milky way but we're gonna keep we're gonna keep it moving there are several of these giant towers in the eagle nebula three of which have been called the pillars of creation Stars are forming at their tips. Eventually, though, the light from the mass of stars will win, zapping away at the structures, dissolving them. There's also some very hot gas in the nebula that might be the result of a star that has already exploded. If so, then the pillars really don't have long to live. In a few thousand years, they won't be eroded away they'll be blasted away. In a lot of nebulae, there's no sharp edge. They just kind of fade away. 
Sometimes that's because the gas thins out, so there's not enough stuff there to get lit and see. Other times it's because there's just one or maybe a few stars lighting up the whole cloud. And at some distance from them, the starlight fades and can't illuminate the gas anymore. But sometimes nebulae do have sharp edges. That usually happens when a gas cloud is expanding, like in a planetary nebula or supernova. The gas slams into the much thinner gas that is strewn between the stars, what we call the interstellar medium. The expanding gas piles up like snow in a snowplow, getting denser and glowing more brightly. Gas inside a nebula can be in turmoil, too. Winds from stars compress the gas. Shock waves form when stars explode and when they're born. These can create lovely sheets, tendrils, and filaments in nebulae as well. All of these factors can come together to create great beauty. Not too far from the Orion Nebula in the sky is another dark nebula, superposed on a bright emission nebula. By coincidence, the dense dark material is shaped like a gigantic chess piece, and it's called the Horsehead Nebula. It's being eroded by a star called Sigma Orionis off the top of the frame here, and that's also making the gas behind it glow in that sharp ridge. One of my favorite nebulae in the sky is Barnard's Loop, a huge arc of material that's formed either by the expanding gas from supernovae or the winds of all the massive stars being born in the Orion complex. It's also the outer edge of a huge bubble surrounding a substantial amount of real estate in the constellation Orion. In this image, you can see both the Orion and the Horsehead Nebulae. The loop is so big, you could fit 25 full moons across it. One more thing. I've been talking about bright and dark nebulae, but that's an old-fashioned way of thinking of them. I've also mentioned that infrared light can get through them. But remember from episode 24 that the kind of light an object gives off depends on its temperature. Clouds of dust that look dark to the human eye are actually glowing if you observe them in the far infrared, while outside the colors our eyes can detect. But we have telescopes that can see at these much longer wavelengths. In Orion, there's a reflection nebula called M78. Between M78 and Earth are long filaments of very cold and dark dust, blocking the light from the reflection nebula behind and looking like dark rivers running through it. But when you use a telescope that can see light with a wavelength of a millimeter or so, that dust glows brightly, threading through M78 like ribbons of fire. Like so much else in life, what you see really depends on how you see it. If there's a life lesson there, feel free to take it. Today you learn that nebulae are clouds of gas and dust in space. They can glow on their own or reflect light from nearby stars. When they glow, it's usually predominantly red from hydrogen and green from oxygen. And when they reflect and scatter light, it's from massive hot stars, so they look blue. Stars are born in some nebulae and create new ones as they dock. Some nebulae are small and dense. Others can be dozens or hundreds of light years across. Also, they're incredibly beautiful. Crash Course Astronomy is produced in association with PBS Digital Studios. All right. So, uh, I just shows you guys, you know, the um, what a nebula is, right? So, I, I hope you guys understand that nut. Let's go back to... Um, Let's go to go back to the goddess nut real quick. Give me one second so that we can we can, you know, just for memory purposes. Can you guys see that? Let me know if you see that, Ken. Mm -hmm. All right. So as we learned just now, that Nut is the goddess of one of the ones who, who uh, bore the gods. You understand what I'm saying? She She's the one who birthed stars, as you can see in her body embedded in her body are the stars she also created helped to create the the uh the planets and the satellites all of these different gods in here were a result of her creation all right so we now see her role in the birth of the sun look because of her role in the rebirth of the sun but we know that she actually birthed the sun all right, let's go to what a galaxy is. You got you see what a galaxy is right there, Ken? All 
All right, so mm -hmm. let's go. This is the etymology of the word galaxy from late 14th century from French galaxy or directly from late Latin galaxies, the Milky Way as a feature in the night sky. Here we go with the night sky. Again, she's the sky goddess. She is the galaxy. She is the nebula before the galaxy is actually formed. All right. The Greek galaxies in the galaxies, uh, click close, literally milky circle. That's what she is. She's forming a circle. She's forming what is perceived to be a semicircle hovering over her creations. All right. We go back to the etymology of the word galaxy. All right. From gala, from milk, because she's the cow goddess. This is where we get the milk from. All right. So I hope you guys see the connection between Nut and our particular galaxy. All right. So now we're going to get into how noon views views her all right give me one second let me get this set up real quick you want to say anything anything quick ken or or you you enjoying the show so far what's what's going on you guys understanding where this where this nut things coming from no, you doing you you cooking them up with the scientific evidence and uh, most of uh the people that that so called know things they don't they they don't know this because of the information been so mixed up and we you know you know evolution just really brought everything down so a lot of them don't even know that it's it's like I said before in my video it's looked at as a story. And as a, and a myth, and uh, but I do know that they they call Hathor the Milky Way. So they, like I said before, they was close, but they're not. They don't have the actual facts. But you're doing good, Ken. I'm I'm gonna hold off until what I got to say after you do what you got to do. All right, cool. So let me know if you see this screen share. It's from the Nature Books. See that screen share, Ken? All right, cool, cool, cool. This is from uh the nature of nature. Um, speaking about the um the universes. All right. Um, we're gonna skip down to this particular number 38. Listen to reason. The gestation period of universes indeed lasts 18 million years from point three south on the smash circular order to point six east on the same circle. This paragraph shows this paragraph shows demonstrations as shapes eight and nine depicting the gigantic black ball hole and the formation of the brain core of Alpha Star, plus how the Alpha Star grows and forms the colossal universe nebula, also called the universe water ball. Matter invades the vacuum black ball hole with a counterclockwise turning motion. First, the brain core of the alpha star is formulated indeed by brain newts and their energy reason. Use the high, using the highest quality of matter. The brain core, the center of the alpha star, who is the center and controlling star of a universe, as well as the first star of, the, of a universe and brightest star of the universe grows a body for itself as it rotates the body gets bigger and bigger and grows much bigger than the vacuum black ball hole that started the brain core spinning the growth of the matter sorry the growth of matter by the rotating brain core and energy non-reason continues until the ability and capacity of the brain core to attract matter for growth cease to be effective and magnetic now the gigantic brain core now sorry now the gigantic brain core now brain of the huge nebula has formed and 
has formulated and formed the incredible immense nebula called by universe scientists sorry called by universe science the universe water ball as time passes the universe water ball condenses contracts this decreases in size as it settles in and matures for reproduction let it be remembered always and let it be known listen to reason shapes eight and nine in paragraph 38 of this topic depict the black ball hole which is beginning of the universe of nature after the matter of nature has been impregnated shapes eight and nine also demonstrate the germination assistance in conception origin and development of matter by darkness of blackness of vacuum now shape 10 in the paragraph illustrates the enormous nebula at full size before it condenses and matures for reproduction as given in shape 11 of this paragraph the hydrosphere shown here is the human-like state condition of matter that exists between and among the infinite universes of nature but the hydrosphere is not primordial chaos because it has been screened by brain newts and their energy re non reason for growth of universes and does have definite form like balls of air bubbles called universes and universes indeed scattered throughout all infinite absolute nature and surely its hydrosphere let it be remembered always and be known now here's where we're gonna find out in noon science who nut is listen to reason of course the geometric figures that are shown in this topic concerning universes are bisections of universe forms with the cut section facing the reader the brain caught in the center of the original water ball nebula and its energy non-reason also cause other smaller brain cores to formulate and for and grow bodies for themselves on the outer surface of the first nebula after smaller nebulas reproduced by the original nebula formulate and finish developing they loosen up and are spun off by the mother nebula the original nebula this is who nut is in noon science she is the mother nebula the one who creates stars where stars are born from you understand what i'm saying it's the same thing as nut in ancient egypt she is the one that created the stars the sun you guys you guys see it here this is some illustrations that Afro-Unu drew and knew of. I'm gonna continue reading as shown in paragraph by shape 12. And this nebula reproduction continues until only enough matter formula is left for the body of the brain core of the original and supreme alpha star. In turn, the revolving smaller nebulas, water balls also reproduce, but their procreations are the true stars the suns in turn reproduce the planets you guys see this and the planets reproduce the satellites by the help of their suns making the creation of the universe of nature a chain reaction of formulations formations developments and growth by the brain newts and non reason of almighty absolute nature most stars in their systems turn counterclockwise the turn of order and those who do turn in a clockwise sorry and those who do turn in a clockwise the turn of chaos direction do so for universe balancing purposes because opposites in nature balance persons places and things let it be remembered always and let it be, let it be remembered always well so you guys see that this particular uh what you call it that nut is the mother nebula she's the one that helps to create the um the stars as we see in the the other figures that i showed you before so now the wapians are saying that nut is brain newts here's where i'm going to shut this whole thing down once and for all and forever let's see now we know that nut is what 
the one who creates stars, which means this is a gigantic nebula. Let's look at the word gigantic. I want you guys to look at the word gigantic. Depicting the gigantic black ball hole. I want you guys to see that. This is a colossal, look at the word here, colossal universe nebula. Colossal, meaning big, meaning you can see it with your naked eyes. You can actually see a nebula, meaning that you will actually see nut. All right? Now let's go to what brain newts are because the Wapians feel as if they know what they're talking about. But who knows better than the Nooniboos themselves? Ken, can you see that? Brain newts of nature. All right. So here we go. I want you, I'm going to skip down real quick to number 42. Listen to reason. Brain newts are neither, look at this, macroscopic nor microscopic, meaning they can neither be seen. Important word here. They can neither be seen with the naked eyes nor with a telescope so in turn nebulas can be seen with telescopes they've been they've been viewing these things with telescopes we just watched a video where they've been viewing nebulas with telescopes nut which are nebulas are can, can be seen with a telescope brain newts cannot be seen at all look at what it tells you here i'm going to read the whole paragraph listen to reason Brain newts are neither macroscopic nor microscopic, meaning they can neither be seen with the naked eyes nor with the microscope. But one can taste them, hear them, smell them, feel them, see and see them in a dream or vision. When one eats, he or she tastes brain newts. When one receives a sound, he or she is hearing brain newts. When a person detects an aroma, he smells brain newts. And using using brain the nerves thereof to do so when a person experiences emotions as in the case of spirit beings bringing the nervous system to ecstasy or sex intercourse bringing the excitement of orgasm he and she feel the meltdown of active brain newts when a person sees figures forms and images in a dream or vision he sees brain newts melting down into configurations and mental words although all brain newts are the same everywhere in all matter what in fact causes the differences in their creations or growths and sound smells feelings tastes and colors by sight as in dreams and visions are the very quality and kind of matter that they are vibrating or melting down in when brain newts melt down they become mind and reason that is thinking and creative energy therefore they create and are taste sound smell feeling and subconscious sight in the form of dreams and visions as well as growth creations and thoughts let it be remembered always and let it be known so let it be known that brain newts are not nut from ancient egypt because they are absolutely the the furthest opposites that you can find because guess what nebulas are light years uh uh in, in size compared to brain newts that you can't even see with a telescope or or a microscope or anything like that so guess what? Nawapians basically put two opposites together because they sounded the same. Nut and nut. Nut meaning N-U-T from Egypt is not the same as brain newts, N-O-O-T. It's not the same thing. So I just shut that down in one whole whop. So that's my presentation for the night. I hope that you guys learned um, that nut is definitely the nebula which uh which creates stars um the caucasian stole that from us told us that it's mythology 
when it was actually it when it was an actual fact when we were drawing these things on egypt this is not mythology this is not paganism this is none of those things Th these were actual facts that were being written on the wall in a symbolic form but it was a perfect symbolic form because guess what women uh birth um the the future of um universes of races and things of that nature so our ancestors understood that these nebulas would in turn be women or be depicted as a female energy that cr creates sons you understand and she's impregnated by the male factors of space or vacuum i'm going to do another presentation on what space is because scientists are trying to figure out what space is but the simple term for what space is space is just everything that's not matter so wherever matter is space is because matter is the sorry because space is the container for matter so everywhere they cannot detect matter is space because they're going to tell you that they don't know what space is they just know that it's a vacuum which means that it what it causes things to move our galaxy moves because of space it causes it to rotate all right so that'll be my presentation i know that the ken uh tarnoon probably has something to uh add to that so i hope you guys were very well informed of what brain newts are and what nut is in ancient egypt and that's my time that was that was excellent ken um and right to the point you know i'm a, what i'm gonna do what I, i'm gonna just i'm gonna chop and screw the, this particular class up and add some more stuff to it because i think that uh anything else it's not gonna do no justice tonight i'm glad that you came through and show noon as a science and that also people need to stop thinking that the information can't be found unless you are part of some secret society because that's not um true afro already said that most of the mysteries and the secrets that they have are not even that uh mysterious it's, right it's not even that mysterious it's not even that deep when 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 they go through all of those things they go through to get those things that's already known and we just showed and proved that um the ancients knew exactly what the universe is as like they like like they say as above so below but it actually as below as above because there's no way you you could be able to, to know these things if you didn't study self like they said know thyself then you would know that so what's what's out there is inside the body and so i just wanted to definitely give you a big up tonight and i'm gonna save what i'm gonna do to add on to this uh this wonderful uh presentation so i'm good um two mental cosmic peace i want to thank everybody for coming out and uh i hope that it wasn't okay well we know it wasn't hard to understand if those who you know are familiar with the so-called stores and know that these things were um again we're talking about time we're talking about a lot of ignorance that happened to our people or memory loss down through evolution which is a natural order of how things go and um yeah th that was that was good ken i, I really enjoyed that mm -hmm. all right kids um we just you know we just want to make sure that we can connect the dots you know um and by us connecting the dots we're showing you guys that and we're validating it through noon this is not something that 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 has been validated through another um another science we're validating it through noon and showing you guys that we indeed are making the connections that you know that need to be that need to be connected and then the wapians need to stop stealing noon because you're looking even more foolish. nut in ancient egypt you it's like a complete opposite the same way we told you guys that noon and you and 
noon n o o n e is not the same things those things are colossal opposites they are like the furthest things from each other brain newts are not the same as nut in ancient in egypt because nebulas are way larger than brain newts that's just like saying hey you know the galaxy is a um is an is an atom that's not true they're composed of atoms the same way nebulas are composed of brain newts yes but they're not the same thing you can't say that one is is the other you understand you can say that one is composed of the other but when you start saying that newts and nut and all those things are the same thing it's it's totally false and we need to we needed to make sure that they understood that and i thank everybody for coming out and i thank everybody for um for listening in on on the um the amazing bill i'm amazed by myself sometimes when i do this this type of work you know what i'm saying because new point noon really helps to shape my mind and helps me to uh push forward and really and really does an amazing job with putting the information forward so fear not anymore you know kins the information is coming out so whenever you see egyptologists or brother jabari talking about oh these are just you know mythological stories no these are factual stories nut is a fact and we just proved that she is a fact she she produces they, the thing is they want to be able to say that their science is the top science that's false our science which is noon is the top science and we're going to prove that every step of the way so any caucasian that want to step up their plate to get get beat down they can step up any new opian want to step up to the plate and and justify their plagiarism they could step up and do and and we could do it brother jabbar whoever want to step up to the plate we got that smoke look for the next video that's coming out where did the caucasian come from because that's coming up next we're mm -hmm. gonna prove beyond a shadow of a doubt where the caucasian come from because there's too much confusion in the community for all of this mess to be happening once we put it out we shut it down we move forward period nut and newt the game the game is over for that it's over so that's all my piece i want to say on that true uh peace to all the kids out there this video was dedicated to uh ray noon ray mm -hmm. also known as repu uh belu lupu um my condolences go out to him uh you know if you guys could just you know do a little meditation you know towards his life you know just probably a moment of silence you know and you know and and meditate on the fact that we need better health you know what i'm saying and our people need to be healed and trust me we are coming for the for the healing aspect myself and quipo are working on something real big and it's going to be a smoker so be ready we're coming all right we out true peace all to everybody true peace